Hi, Michelle Glass here. Welcome to another episode of Chapter 12, Lecture 12. Our topic for this video is the refractory period. There are two different types of refractory period. We have what's called the absolute refractory period, and this means you are absolutely unable, it is impossible to stimulate the cell again during this period. And then we have what's called the relative refractory period where uh, it's hard, it's possible, but it's super duper hard to stimulate the cell again. Why do we need to talk about refractory period? This is gonna cause our action potential to go in one direction only, from the soma, the cell body, that axon hillock to the end um, of our axon, that synaptic knob. Okay, so we had this graph in our previous video. So we're looking at our action potential, and we can see that during the entire depolarization part, and a good amount of the repolarization part, our cell is in the absolute refractory period. No more stimulation. Why is that? Well, you can't get any more sodium in. So during that depolarization part, you know, all the channels are open. You have the maximum amount of sodium flooding in at that moment. Then at plus 30 millivolts, those channels close or deactivate and they can't be stimulated to open again until the end of the absolute refractory period. So the uh, membrane has to um, get to a certain voltage before they can be activated again. So you have that whole chunk of time when the cell, the membrane, cannot be stimulated again. And then we have what's called the relative refractory period. And this is pretty much coordinated by the open voltage-gated potassium channels. Potassium is leaving this entire time. So even though you can simulate those voltage-gated sodium channels, they would have to have so much extra sodium coming in to override all of that potassium that's leaving. It's gonna be super duper hard. It's just gonna take a really big graded potential to get the cell to threshold at this time. So it's not likely. Again, why is this significant? This is giving us the unidirectional movement of the action potential. It's going one way. It's going from the axon hillock to that synaptic knob. And that is it for now. Stay tuned.